so we will take the given water sample we have to check the quality of that water sample so we have to take the water sample with the help of sterile pipette we have taken the water sample 10 ml of the water sample it is used and that is the test tube which is containing the double strength mcconkey's broth and uh, the durham's tube it is inserted into that test tube and into that double strength mcconkey's broth tube we have to inoculate 10 ml of the water sample so we have with us five tubes of double strength mcconkey's broth which are inserted with the durham's tube and into each test tube we have to inoculate 10 ml 10 ml, 10 ml of the water sample so into each test tube we have to inoculate 10 ml of the given water sample and then we have to flame the mouth of the test tube and keep it aside then we have to inoculate next test tube with 10 ml of the water sample so in this way we have to inoculate the remaining test tube with 10 ml of the given water sample and the experiment it is perform aseptically so second test tube of double strength mcconkey's broth it is to be inoculated with 10 ml of the given water sample we have to inoculate it aseptically so as to avoid external contamination here it is taken to avoid the contamination we should not touch our hands to the tips of that pipette now we have to inoculate 1 ml of the water sample into the single strand test tube into the five test tube of the single strand which are inserted with the durham's test tube one ml water it is taken and it is inoculated mm -hmm. now we have to inoculate one ml of the given water sample into the test tube which is containing single strength mcconkey's broth so we have to take it with the sterile pipette 1 ml it is taken with the sterile pipette and it is to be inoculated into the test tube which is containing single strength mcconkey's broth and it is inserted with the durham tubes we can see that that is containing the durham tubes so 1 ml is inoculated aseptically and gently we have to shake the test tube vigorous shaking it is not allowed because that will create the formation of bubbles so care should be taken that the bubble should not be formed into the test tube then the another test tube which is containing single strength mcconkey's broth it is inoculated with the 1 ml of the given water sample and then it is kept and in this way we have to uh, inoculate the remaining test tube with the 1 ml of the given water sample the inoculation it is performed aseptically now friends we have to take 0.1 ml of the water sample 
and we have to inoculate that 0.1 ml of the water sample into the single strength test tube 5 tubes which contain the single strength McConkey's broth. We have to take it aseptically in between the two burners. So 0.1 ml of the water sample it is being taken and that 0.1 ml of the water sample we have to inoculate it into the 5 tube test tubes single strength test tubes so in the first tube 0.1 ml of the given water sample it is inoculated all the test tubes they are inserted with the rinse tubes now next test tube of single strength McConkey's broth it is inoculated with 0.1 ml of the given water sample and in this way we have to inoculate the remaining test tube with 0.1 ml of the water sample we have to use sterile pipette So friends, in this way we have inoculated the 15 test tubes with the given water sample. So friends, in this video we have shown you the procedure of MPN. So for the preparation of this, we have used McConkey's broad test tube that is double strength McConkey's broad test tube and the single strength. Into the uh, all the uh, set of 15 tubes it was taken. And the first tubes of the double strength McConkey's broth, they were inoculated with the given water sample. They were inoculated with the 10 ml of the water sample. And we can see that each test tube it is containing, it is inserted with the small Durham's test tube. And into the 5 tubes of double strength McConkey's broth, 10 ml of the water sample, it is added into each test tube of double strength McConkey's broth. And then into the remaining 5 tubes of single strength McConkey's broth we have inoculated 1 ml of that water sample into each of the 5 tubes of single strength McConkey's broth which are inserted with the Durham's tube and the remaining 5 tubes of the single strength McConkey's broth they are inoculated with 0.1 ml of the given water sample and all these test tubes, 15 test tubes, they are inoculated with the given water sample, they are inoculated with a measured volume of the given water sample and that all test tubes, the care should be taken that the practical it is to be performed aseptically and you have to use sterile pipette, you have to avoid the contamination and then after inoculation you have to incubate all these test tubes in the incubator at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. And after incubation, we have to compare the number of positive test tubes. So we have to uh, see how much of the test tubes they are positive in each row. So then we have to compare it with the MPN chart. Then we have to compare it with the standard MPN chart. So we have to count the number of positive test tubes in each strand of the test tube. So we have to uh, count the number of the positive test tubes in each row and we have to observe the test tubes for the acid and gas production. If there is a change in the color of the medium that will indicate the acid production. If there is a formation of bubble in the Durham's tubes that will indicate the gas production. Because this method it is used to detect the presence of coliform to enumerate the number of coliform, fecal coliform present in the given water sample and the coliform that is E. coli, they will ferment lactose sugar, they will utilize the lactose sugar and they will produce the acid. So acid production it is indicated by change in the uh, color of the medium and gas production it is indicated by the uh, 
uh, formation of bubble into the Durham's tubes and we have to keep all these tubes for incubation at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. So now we have to keep all these set of the test tube into the incubator for incubation. We have to keep it for incubation at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours and after incubation we have to observe the positive test tube. So friends, we have kept all the affecting tubes after inoculation of the water sample. We have kept it for incubation into incubator at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours and after incubation we can see that some of the test tube they have shown the change in the color of the medium. So if there is uh, the production of acid that is indicated by change in the color of the medium so we can see that change in the color of the medium it is found in some of the test tube and we can also see the formation of gas so if there is a formation of bubble formation in the Durham's tube then we can indicate that there is production of the gas so acid gas production it is to be observed and we have to count the number of positive test tube into each row so how much number of the uh, double stent test tubes they are positive they are showing the positive result that is they are showing acid and gas production how much number of the test tube of uh, the single stent which are inoculated with 1 mf they are showing the positive test and how much number of the single uh, strength uh, test tube which are inoculated with 0.1 ml they are showing the positive test so we have to count the all number of the positive test into each row and then we have to compare with the standard EMPN chart and then we can get how much is the number of coliform bacteria present 100 uh, present per 100 ml of the given water sample and by this way we can indicate we can check the potability of water that is whether the given water sample it is safe for drinking purpose or not thank you